It was a time of discovery, both as a nation and as individuals. We found ourselves in the beginning of a new technology. We elected new leaders, and we looked up to new heroes. Sometimes we scared ourselves a little, but it was a time of excitement. And now, looking back, most of all, we remember the music. For the next hour, we're going to turn back the clock and party, 50s and 60s style, as Frankie Avalon presents The Rockin' Era, featuring The Drifter, The Crystal, Little Anthony, and Del Shannon. And now our host, Mr. Frankie Avalon. How's this for a time warp? This hotel lobby in South Florida is positive proof that our love affair with the 50s and 60s is really still going strong. Now, do you remember when the fastest way to a girl's heart was owning your own car? When cruising was a Saturday night ritual? And why not? Gas was only 20 cents. But I'll tell you what, you know it was the music that made the 50s and 60s the rockin' era. So for the next 60 minutes, we are gonna do a little reminiscing. So stick around and I'll be right back with some stories and some very special musical memories from the Crystals, Del Shannon, Little Anthony, and right after this, those Dukes of Doo-Wop, the Drifters, don't go away. Hey, remember this? The good old jukebox? Well, you see, in the beginning of the rockin' era, no self-respecting malt shop or diner would be caught without one of these little babies. And no self-respecting jukebox would be caught without a great selection of love songs and dance numbers. And, of course, doo-wop songs. By the way, did you ever wonder how doo-wop singing got started? Well, I'll tell you. You see, it all began with four guys hanging out in front of a candy store somewhere on the East Coast in the 50s, and then they began to harmonize. Uh, something like this. Do up, da do up, da do up, da do up. And then they added a synchronized move, like this. A do up, da do up, da do up, da do up, da do. Cindy, you have my malt. How about the drifters? Remember the drifters? They probably were the epitome of do up singing. Well, the Drifters started out as a rhythm and gospel group. But in the late 50s, they began experimenting with a liberated gospel sound that had a new, hefty kind of a beat that hadn't been heard before. But in 1959, they hit pop music pay dirt with a song called There Goes My Baby, which immediately shot up to number two on the charts. The next year, they made it all the way to number one with Save the Last Dance for Me. You know, I recently worked at the Drifters in a concert in Pompano Beach, Florida, where they just absolutely set audiences rocking. And with those two classic doo-wop numbers, it all happened like this. Listen to this one that said, hey, you can dance, you can dance with the guy that gives you the eye, let him hold you tight, yeah. Come on, sing it. And you can smile, Give me smile for the man who held your hand under the pale light. But don't forget who's taking you home. And in who's on you. Everybody on the sweet mouth, let me hear the words say, say.
Singing with the drifters in the early days was the musical equivalent of playing with the New York Yankees. I mean, during the days of Babe Ruth or Roger Maris or even Joe DiMaggio. Many of the drifters went on to successful solo careers too, you know. I mean, guys like Clyde McFadder and Benny King. But the distinctive sound that they developed in the 60s has remained their constant trademark. A sound that they built not just with their voices and style, but their ability to pick great songs. Now that last song, There Goes My Baby, was a song that was written by the team of Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller, two men who really helped change the face of rock and roll in the 60s with their many, many firsts. For example, this recording right here, this song, There Goes My Baby, marked the very first time that strings, violins, cellos were used on a rhythm and blues record. Lieber and Stoller were among the movers and shakers of the 60s rock and roll scene. Their credits included the songs from Elvis Presley's film classics Jailhouse Rock and King Creole. Getting back to the Drifters, here's a sample of the Brill Group's genius again from that Pompano Beach concert. Listen, if you can't remember, Tell me, says, uh, this magic moment It's so different and so new But like any other Softer than the summer night Everything I want I have Whenever I hold you tight At this magic moment While your lips are close to mine But lasts forever
just to bring back a few memories. Let's go up on the roof there, gentlemen, huh? When this old world starts getting better And people know just too much for me to move in And all my kids just drift right into space Oh, on the roof, the only place I know Hey, when you just sat to wish to make it so And let me tell you now when I come home feeling tired and beat I go up where the air is fresh and sweet Hustling crowd and all that rat race noise down in the street. On the roof, the only place I know. Hey, where you just sat to wish to make it so. Hey, let's go up on the roof. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Telling you right smack dab in the middle of town I found a paradise It's trouble proof Yeah And if this world starts getting you down There's room enough for two Up on the roof Up on the roof Oh, come on Around 1958, a new rock sound was emerging from jukeboxes across the country, performed by girls for girls, a sound that came from groups with names like the Chantels, the Shirelles, and the Ronettes. The songs they sang were a celebration of innocent love. Mostly they were about boys, nice boys, bad boys, boys who were just out of reach. Here, let me show you what I mean. Uh, listen to these lyrics. I met him on a Monday and my heart stood still. The only problem was she didn't really meet this guy at all, you know. All she did was get a glimpse at him. Somebody else had to tell her his name. Recognize the song? I'll give you a hint. In 1963, it hit number three on the charts. Still don't recognize it? Maybe this will help. Right, they do run, run by the Christmas. Somebody told me that his name was Bill. To do run, 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 to do run, run. Yes, my heart's too still. Yes, his name was Bill. And when he walked me home, to do run, 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 to do run, run. He knew what he was doing when he caught my eye. To do run, 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 to do run, run. He looked so quiet.
would come along. Uh huh. He be tall, handsome, rich and strong. Uh huh. But now the boy love has come to me. Yes. But he sure ain't the way I thought he'd be. Uh huh. Can I get some yelling and screaming out there? Hey. The Crystals, like the Drifters, were more closely identified with their songs than the individuals in the group. And the source of those songs? Remember the Brill group I talked about a few minutes ago? Well, they were right in there turning out hit after hit for this hot group. The next Crystal songs, written by Barry Mann and Cynthia Wheel. Now, before we go and hear that next song, there was a big difference between groups like the Drifters and the rock groups like the Crystals. You see, the girl rock groups were packaged by producers who picked the girls, picked the songs, and shaped the sound. The producing genius behind the Crystals, and also a group called the Ronettes, was an eccentric young man who started producing records at the age of 16. Oh, and listen to this. By the time he was 21, he was a millionaire. His name was Phil Spector, and as a record producer, he left his mark on a lot of rock performers in the early 60s. Among them, the Teddy Bears, the Righteous Brothers, Ike and Tina Turner, and Connie Francis. Now here's the Crystals again with a Spectre Man wheel collaboration that has really stood the test of time. The song, Uptown. He gets up each morning and he goes downtown Where everyone's his boss and he's lost in an angry land He's a little bad They've got to give Oh, he's got to live But then he comes up town Where he can hold his head up high Well, up town he knows that now he's standing by And when I take his hand There's no man that can put him down Cause his world is sweet Laid at his feet When he's up town Yeah, 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 up town 
Girl rock groups with their songs about boys were really hot between the years 1958 through 1965. But fortunately, there were still some songwriters around who were still writing songs about girls for guys to sing. As a matter of fact, here's one song that I recorded in 1959, and it made it to the top 10 of the charts, and it really captures the mood and the times. When a girl changes from bobby socks to stockings, and she starts trading her baby toys for boys. When that once shy little sleepy head learns about love and its lilt, you can bet that the change is more than from cotton to sin. And if a miss wants to be kissed instead of cuddled, and do this you are in doubt is what what to say oh, when a girl changes from bobby sons to stockings then she's old enough to give her heart away when Stockings, that she's old enough to give her heart away. away. Well, that song really brings back some memories for me. But you know, sometimes the passing years can give us a new perspective on a song. You take the song like you just listened to, uh, Bobby Sox to Stockings. Back when I recorded it, uh, I was, well, well, I was pretty young. And I sang it as a, a love song at that time. But not too long ago, you see, things changed, and my oldest daughter, Dina, she got married. So when I sing that song today, the words have an entirely different meaning for me. I mean, they're still about love, but now they're about a special kind of love that a father feels as he watches his daughter grow from a little girl into a woman. Speaking of children, you know, there was one performer at that Pompano Beach concert who has something in common with me besides the love of rock and roll. You see, he also has eight children. That's right, eight. And I'm talking about my good buddy, little Anthony. Now, can you imagine that? He has eight, I have eight, together we have 16. No wonder why the two of us spend so much time on the road. I mean, with all those kids, we're talking about lots of pasta. Anthony started singing when he was a student at Brooklyn Boys High School with a group called the DuPonts. Then in the summer of 1958, he formed the Imperials, who landed a hit record their very first time out with a song that shot the new group up to number two on the charts. And as you'll see, it's still pleasing audiences today. I know you Don't know what I'm going through Standing here
you ever so much, Hardy Group, Hardy Crowd, for staying with us. And uh, bless your heart and tell you what, let's all take an imaginary trip again, but not so far this time. Only 23 years. Mm. Memories, sweet memories. Oh, I remembered it well. Oh, yes, I did. Outside looking in And I wanna be, and I wanna be back on the inside With you You is somebody new And I don't know what to do Cause I'm still in love with you On the outside looking in I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be left on the outside All alone Well I guess I had my day And you let me go my way And now it's me who for some rock and roll trivia. Anthony was dubbed Little Anthony by this very flamboyant man, Alan Free. And I'm sure lots of you diehard rock and rollers remember that name, Alan Free. Alan Freed got almost as much press in the 50s as the rock stars he touted until the payola scandal in the early 60s ended his career. But what you might not know is that Alan Freed is also the man who first coined the term rock and roll. Alan's idea behind giving rhythm and blues a new name was to remove the racial stigma that was attached to it in those days and move the predominantly black sound into the mainstream of American music. Now, he also tried unsuccessfully to copyright the term rock and roll so that all record companies would have to pay him to use it. It just didn't work. Well, let's get back to the music. Now here's little Anthony again with one of his biggest hits, I Think I'm Going Out of My Head. Oh, 
In 1961, jukeboxes around the country started rocking to a brand new sound, courtesy of a newcomer to the rock and roll scene whose number one song featured two things never before heard on a rock and roll record. One, the proto synthesizer. Two, the falsetto voice. Listen. The young performer was Charles Westover, better known to rock and roll fans as Del Shannon. And his very first record, Runaway, turned out to be exactly that, a runaway hit. The song not only hit number one in the United States, but repeated the feat in the United Kingdom and remained number one for 17 weeks in the U.S. and 22 weeks in the U.K. Now, to prove that he was no flash in the pan, Del Shannon followed his first hit with a series of top 20 singles, including Little Town Flirt, Keep Searching, and Hats Off to Larry. And judging from the response Shannon got at the Pompano Beach concert, he hasn't lost his touch with the audience. So here's Del Shannon recreating two of his biggest hits, Runaway and Hats Off to Larry. As I walk along, I wonder what went wrong with my love that was so strong. And as I still walk around, Misery and I wonder I wonder, 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 I w
Like this hour, the 50s and 60s are gone. Tail fins and 20 cents a gallon of gasoline are a thing of the past. But the rock and roll of the rockin' era is still packing in crowds at concerts all around this country. And you want to know why? Because 50s and 60s rock and roll isn't just a beat, a sound, it's an attitude, it's a way of life, and it's still the music that makes you feel good. Well, I know you all have to go now, but uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll just kind of stick around a little longer and, and kind of reminisce with some of my musical memories and maybe some of my own personal memories. So until we meet again, see you later, alligator. I've been crying over i
It's true. 